Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. I hope you kind of saw our program last week because we had a marvelous program with the CRS and, and a whole event of how we can help the poor. And now we're going to continue from last week to today. We had a Sarah Robinson, who was the manager of community giving for Catholic Relief Services, and daughter of Charity Sister Joanne Dress, executive director for our own diocese, the Diocese of Trenton Office of Catholic Social Services, about youth participation in the Helping Hands volunteer event at our Diocesan Eucharistic Congress. It's a Catholic Relief Services initiative aimed, as you probably saw and hope, at permanently ending hunger and easing suffering, not just by providing the food, although that's very important, but by teaching and training the communities to provide food for themselves for the long term. Sarah and Sister Joanne are both here again with us today, along with a few members of the Pope John Paul II Regional School community in Willingboro. Charlize Martin. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Got a great smile. Thank you. <laughs> and Charles Walker. Thank you, son, for being with us today. It's really nice of you to give up your time from school to come today. <laughs> <laughs> they're both seventh graders at Pope John Paul II Regional School, and they're going to share what kind of an impact the Helping Hands volunteer event had on them and their school community and their own friends. With us also is Michelle Phillips, who will share her point of view as a parent of a seventh grader who participated in the Helping Hands volunteer event. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. And Thank thanks you. for having your daughter share so much of her gifts she and talents. She had a great time. Oh, I bet, I bet. <laughs> and Madeline Dranchek is the seventh grade teacher at Pope John Paul II Regional School. And Madeline will share the kind of changes she's seen in the school community as a result of participating in the project. And Sister Joanne, always, always so nice to have you with us. You, and Sarah, you're a gift. Thank you. You're a gift to CRS, but you're a gift to us to, to share your, your love and your talents. Sister Joanne and, and maybe Sarah, we can kind of flip back to you just to get us started for today. Tell us a little bit about that Helping Hands volunteer event that's you know, designed for schools and, and other church groups and how the event goes beyond just the packaging and shipping and how it all kind of fits together for us. Sure. Uh, this is a new program at Catholic Relief Services. It's, it's meant to engage Catholics of all ages in the fight against hunger. Uh, we do this by packaging specially formulated meals for the poor and the hungry overseas, for people who are starving. Um, it's a three-stage process in the event where people go around tables, they all have assigned jobs, they fill these bags full of rice and soy and dehydrated vegetables and um, seal them up and send them on their way and they go over to Burkina Faso in West Africa, a country that's in the midst of a, a severe crisis. They go to 26 centers that serve the elderly, the poor, uh, the uh, disabled, young girls, uh, orphans, the sick. These are centers that don't have any other resources for the food. They desperately need this food. And along with the meals, this program provides the resources for Catholic Relief Services to uh, work with the people in these centers to develop a livelihood, to provide for themselves in the future, hopefully to have the resources so they don't need this food in the future. They can acquire their own food locally. And over time, uh, we hope to see them move out of these centers and become self-sufficient. So, now, do they just come to the center, Sarah, or do they live there? Or the, the people in these centers live there full time, uh, for one reason or another, depending upon who they are. Uh, they've been, they have no other places to live, um, and CRS works with these partners to care for them and provide for their individual needs in these centers. Oh, wow! Thank you very, very much. And mm -hmm. sister, how about your your own sharing of, uh, of that wonderful event and how you brought it to the I, diocese? I am still so excited about what happened there. I think it was a great experience uh, from what I saw. Uh, the youth really got, got into it, you know. They, they, uh, they're so generous, really, and, and I think we gave them an opportunity to use that generosity. And I think the success of it was really due to the work that came before, as I think we'll probably hear from, from the teachers and the kids in the school. They had Burkina Faso weeks and they, 
they explored, you know, all the different aspects of that. So the, it was a good experience. It was a, a way to concretize faith. It's, it's, we come from the Eucharist and we bring it out to people we meet and we try to help others. And this was one way to do it. So um, I'm, I'm most grateful to CRS for their uh, facilitating this. You know, they were, they were easy to work with and, and really did a great job. And I'm understanding that it's certainly not just for the youth, but, but oh, and that it's not a one-time event, that this is the beginning of much, much to do with the, with the spirit guiding us and the exactly. love of uh, folks had, like yourself. I've had some inquiries from the parishes, and we hope to get them connected and see what they hope to do. Um, it's, it's for adults, and I think, Sarah, you mentioned that you've done it with senior centers. and Senior and centers, colleges, uh, religious orders, uh, any group from 40 people to thousands. And uh, we can do shifts, we can do three-day events. There really is no limitation. All we need are people who have a compassion for the poor, for people who want to do something concrete and tangible, and, and to feel connected, more importantly, to the people that they're actually making this food for. We, we help them build that connection. So you that, know what's so, so delightful about all of this? Is, is, as you're talking and we're all together, I like that. I almost feel like turning the clock back and saying, "Gee, I'm 20 years younger. I want to. I want to. I do this too." You know, it's, that's what's how exciting it all is. That's that's marvelous. Maybe we'll have one for the priest, Monsignor. Yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> we should. Yeah. We should. I could package. The bishops will be packaging in, in November at their general assembly. At, at, all of the bishops terrific? will be packaging. Uh, that, that, that's, so. that, it's just great. It's just mm -hmm. great stuff. Madeline, how about, you know, what kind of effect can you tell us did, did the event have on, uh, on your students uh, and maybe students that you saw from other schools? And how is it different from other projects that maybe, you know, help fight hunger and different things? I think that helping fight hunger is something that the children are always interested in, mm -hmm. to donate and help. Um, even in Burlington County where they know that these people are hungry and they live next door to me or they but they've never seen, they, they had never heard, most of them, that many of my students are from Africa, their families are from Africa, but they never heard of Burkina Faso. So it was going online, which was great because then they learned about it. And they, but to be able to package food and see what this little bit of food could do, that how many people it could feed was just amazing to them. And that's what made them really interested, that they wanted to be able to, I helped pack that truck. I, I carried the food. I sealed it, you know. And I had lots of students who couldn't get near those tables mm -hmm. because there were so many, so many students up there that they just, they made posters. They, we had taken pictures, so they glued, put my picture on here so we can send it. And mm -hmm. they felt like they knew them. They didn't have to know them, but they would really love to be able to, I wish I could see them, I, you know, and see how this food was helping them. And I think that the need was never this real before. I think that being able to see these little packages of food and what it did for these children was new to them because a box of potato flakes and, or a box of cereal is very different than a bag of rice and soy and vegetables. You know, it's something that they don't have to worry about, food. But I bet you they can imagine, and you're gonna to have to help me with this now. I'm thinking about when I was your age, you know, and you're, you're in school and you're playing, and all of a sudden school gets out and you run home and you're hungry because you know you've been in school all day and maybe you get a, a I don't know help me a little glass of milk or a cookie or something mm -hmm. now tell me some of the folks that you help feed the children how long would it might have been since they had something to eat mm -hmm. in some cases three three days they may they may have one meal every three days so you can see what how, how much yes. benefit there was yes. and uh, and wouldn't it be marvelous if you can make those connections you know you can uh, you know see pictures or cards or mm -hmm. however you're going to be doing all of that now tell me something, Charlize and Charles, because mm -hmm. you're the stars here today. <laughs> okay? All righty. What did you like most about the Helping Hands project? I felt that I had a certain kind of special connection with that because my parents do come from West Africa. Uh -huh. And 
Last year I did get to go to West Africa, but oh. I went. I didn't get to go to Burkina Faso. I went to Liberia, Monrovia, Monrovia, Liberia, and not only did I go to Monrovia, because all around Africa, and and especially Liberia, they are doing better than they were about six years ago when they were having their civil war. Mm -hmm. But like, they they are a country in progress. But I do feel as if when I went to Basal County and I saw the level of poverty and I saw how much need that there were, it brought me back to reality and I knew how much I had and how much little they did. Boy, oh boy. And that, that really changed my aspect of life. So, that, so it really you hope you opened your eyes a little bit more and you could almost feel, you could almost feel that, how you were helping them. Charles, how about yourself now? How about, you know, what were you feeling and when you were doing all of that? And well, well, I like that that I could feel that how much food to eat because cause, cause me, because I have a big plate of food way from when I come home. Why? And you must have don't. a great mom. <laughs> yeah, and they don't. So it really made me appreciate what I have and be grateful. So you can, then you can just... Thank God, you know, when you're having that little bit of food and you come home from school and knowing that uh, some others have, but you, you've helped them. So you know what you're doing, both of you? Your hands and your eyes and your hearts are like an extension of God's hands and God's eyes. And of course, you're really bringing, bringing his love to, uh, to, to children your age and others, other families. And uh, can I ask you how old you are? I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. And Charles? I'm 12 too. 12 years old. You sure you're not going on 20 or something? Aren't they, <laughs> aren't they marvelous? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. God bless you both. I mean, that's, that's, thank you, Charles and Charlotte. That's wonderful stuff. Mom, tell me a little bit, you know, how you, you as, a, as a mom and your daughter was there also, right? My so daughter to, was there. Speak um, about that for us. My daughter was there and it was an exciting experience uh -huh. to go to um, the first Eucharistic Congress. You were there also? I was there oh also. Boy, oh boy. I was one of the chaperones along with yes. um, Mrs. Dran Chan. Thank yes. God for chaperones. <laughs> yes. So I had a, a nice group of girls. They were very well behaved. They enjoyed themselves. They participated in the various events that we had. And I think that having events like this for children of that age, of the age of the children here, and my daughter, it gives them an opportunity to reach out and touch someone from another country. Charlize had a wonderful experience to be able to go to Liberia and experience that one-on-one. -on -one. My daughter won't have that experience. She, she doesn't come from the same background. So for her, it's a little different experience. She, um, since she wasn't able to see that with her eyes, she experienced it by the preparation that they did in the classroom and the research that they did with Mrs. Dranchak and her fellow classmates and talking to um, her classmates such as Charlize and Charles for where they came from and their experiences and then to actually go to the event and see what they were able to do to reach out to another child all the way across the world and still be able to help that child. I think our children are so um, privileged and they have so much so that when they don't have experiences similar to Charlize, they're used to, um, you know, they're worried about the iPad, the iPhone, whatever the latest technology is. Do they have it? Do they not have it? They're not worrying about their next meal. So to be in an environment where they can see what they do and what they've contributed and the food that they're able to send to another country and be a part of that, it connects them. It connects them to the people, it connects them to the need, and it moves them forward in the future as being our future of Catholics who are able to move forward and continue this type of work as we grow. And possibly the, the, the little thought is planted in their hearts and their souls, so to speak, that so. uh, you know, when they go to college, they might want to study some of these things or become part of Right. You know, CRS or so other things So they continue the, the legacy of CRS. Sure. So it was a wonderful opportunity that was presented to the children, and it's a great time for them at that seventh grade age to have that connection and hopefully stay with them for the rest of their lives. You know, God gives us so many great things, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we, we don't use them as well as we should use them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we talk about the iPads or the iPhones or whatever they are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet, you know, it's not just texting and things with exactly. the, the kid across the street. Yeah. All of a sudden, it, it can put us in, in, in touch with brothers right. and sisters all over the world, which is, which is a marvelous, marvelous thing, sister. Monsignor, I think that there was something that uh, we didn't mention uh, last week um, that, that should be known, that the children raised the money to purchase the food. 
uh, the food was what 50 cents a meal it's 50 cents 25 cents goes to pay for the food and the packaging and 25 cents goes to pay for all the programs that help the people have livelihoods the children the youth presented um, CRS with a check at the Congress for $17,238. Wow. And the food, the money is still coming in, so we think we might hit 20,000. And it was only from the youth. It was from the how, youth, how, and they purchased How, how did you food. raise that money? Well, we raise that money. We do a lot of things in our school called mm -hmm. dress down days. So usually like we wear our uniform, but then we would get to dress down, which would be like you get to wear our normal clothes like jeans. <laughs> yeah, they're course, not normal clothes. Still, <laughs> 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 normal clothes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And it was just you were given like given we given like a dollar and like that would come up to I don't know like how much dollars because who doesn't want to dress down day when you get to wear uniform <laughs> like all these different days and so I think I think that that was just a little thing that profited us for a day and profited them for the future. So everybody profited. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that terrific, huh? So impressed, wow. yeah. Wow. So impressed with the generosity really. It was from all the schools and from the religious yeah. and from the youth. From, from all over the diocese. Right. So from little little children to high Everybody school children has. or however that all works. And that's, uh, that's like big brothers and little sisters and all, all having a one, we're all one family. Yeah. Oh, that, that is just, that is so, so terrific. But you know what I'm impressed with when you said that you, 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 you purchased all that with the, with the money, but you said that the food was 25 cents and the, Right. I'm impressed uh, with that. You do you all know, that for 50 cents? If you think about what we eat, or how much our meals here cost yeah. in the U.S. and what we, what, when Charles was talking about his plate of food, how much does that cost? But in, in this event, it's 50 cents for a meal, not only for the food, but that's going to teach someone how to sew or how to make soap or go to the local market and sell cloth so that they don't need that meal in the future. So it's, 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 Food for today and a future, all in one and 50 cents. Shipping also ships everything uh, including over there, the which shipping, is right. very expensive. <laughs> you know, Sarah, if you told that to my mother when I was a kid, I might have gotten one of those bags. <laughs> 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 so tell me, how did the school, what did you do before time to prepare them? Uh, you, you know, uh, that's exciting just to hear about that. Well, in the beginning, Monsignor, we talked about... Sounds like something from the Bible, in the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning, this is what we did. And our principal, uh, Pope John Paul, decided that one grade would go. So she picked the seventh grade that we would go, so then we prepared. However, our whole school collected food and our um, religious ed program. We collected all the food and, the, and, and packaged it, so boxed it, so it would go with us to the Eucharistic Congress. So That by, was for the diocesan programs, That right? was, yeah. yes, that was our diocesan because our food went to Burlington County so Catholic, that food Catholic would be helping charities. So people here in this country? Yes, or and in that, this so that was the first thing but, where, you know, we're, first we're going to start out by collecting food to do that. Then the next thing was the money, that we needed to raise some money so that this way we would be able to pay for, help pay for the food that we were going to send to mm -hmm. Burkina Faso. Then the next thing was making cards. And I decided that I would take pictures of everybody, <laughs> which was the big thing of the day. Uh, you know, and in my class, I just took pictures of my students. And then we had pictures to put on the cards, on the posters that they made. And, and after all of this, then we went online and really learned about Burkina Faso so that they could see pictures of students of children that were there because part of the information that is online states that 64% of the children are of school age, but most of them do not go to school. Mm -hmm. And that was very impressive mm -hmm. to my students. They don't go? Like, <laughs> what? You mean you don't have to go? Why do you? Yeah. <laughs> how, how can you go there and live? <laughs> you know, like what? You don't, you don't go to school? And that was something they could not understand. Mm -hmm. They could not understand that you just would not go to school. Mm -hmm. 
why would that how could that be sure and that that was something that you know making the cards and um our principal made gave me a paper with french sentences on it and i know a, a little bit of french so i knew like okay this is what this says and the, and they were most interested in my prayers are with you because they felt so terrible you're hungry and you don't go to school it's like that they were the two things that really really impressed them so you know it was just it was and and then it was time to go like all of a sudden it was october and it was time for the congress well, Lisa and charles can you tell me a little bit about about the country there because i don't know a whole lot about it did you study it from the in school uh, let's say what you remember is there anything mm -hmm. that you well they well they barely have food and so it's a very poor poor yeah. children that are there yeah and from mm -hmm. what from my understanding is that they don't go to school so when they told me they, they don't go to school i guess i just wasn't like the rest of my kids i was like wait they don't go to school <laughs> you know we don't have to go i i, I want to move to burkina Faso. so i have to go to school and i was like wait wait well, you'd go there and wait. be the principal of a school that you would start <laughs> <laughs> wait okay <laughs> This is what I understand. So they don't go to school because a lot of families need need the child to do work inside the field and stuff. Oh. And so that's how come they don't they can't go to school. Oh, I see. Wow, that's interesting to know that. Mm -hmm. But I now, did I, you two both help package the food? Mm -hmm. how, what did you do when you were there at well, the Eucharistic Congress? I, I was a runner, so I was taking the empty bins because could they could they fill up the rice packets? No point in the bin. And, and I had to bring it to to the packaging stations, and then put the empty buckets bins back at the stations, and then and then the bins weren't empty, so the so the everybody was screaming for a runner when there were no empty bins, <laughs> so so it was hectic. So you had a very important job, oh, yeah. and I would think you had that job because you look strong. Is that because you probably had to pick up those things and. That's that's very very good. <laughs> wow, thank you very much. And honey, what do, did you help package something, or what did you do? Actually, I didn't get to package things. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I was I really wanted to package stuff, but that's my artwork. I did the poster. Well, you did the poster. I helped the poster. It was me and my friend Samantha, and it was just us two. We were the only girls in our group, and uh, the rest of them were all boys. But I think it was the first time because usually the way how lunchtime is set up, all the girls sit together and then, then there's two boys tables. Uh -huh. And we don't really hang out with the guys. So it was like one time where I saw all of the students in our class really connected and didn't argue. We just kind of <laughs> talked like normal children and we could all kind of agree on some level. Because you had something nice to, to work with. Yeah. So, so you, learned, you learned lots of different lessons. <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in, in doing that. I learned that I can get along with some people. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, what, what else did you learn from that project? Besides just knowing you could get along with each other in, in a different way. There were some. What surprised you the most? What surprised me the most was that all these different schools came together and it was just like so many people. And it was like so hectic, but I just, thought about, you know what, it might be hectic, but this is going for a good cause because we are really helping people that really need it. Because we could be doing something else right now that we shouldn't be doing, but we could be helping somebody else out. And I was happy that so many schools did the right choice and made the right choice to help out people in Africa well, and West wonderful. Africa, especially the country Burkina Faso. Did something surprise you, Charles, when you were there? Yeah. The amount of food that they get, mm -hmm. like, cause, cause, I, cause I thought it was gonna be like, like bigger, like, <laughs> like, in like a pint, not a small little plastic bag. How about your sister? Your sister was with you, right? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, no. okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought maybe your sister was with you. I know I thought that his two sisters named are Charlotte and Charlotte, and my name is Charlize. I got you. Okay. <laughs> People make that mistake all the time. Okay. <laughs> what would be your hope for the people there? I mean, what would you like to say? Maybe 
couple of years from now, like when you were going to high school and college, what would you, would you like to meet some of the children that were there? And That would be cool. That would be cool if I met them because I do have friends in Liberia. And the funny thing was I connected more with the kids that were a little bit more like on the middle, like middle class side in Liberia than I did with the kids that were like rich and I was supposed to fit in with, but I really, I couldn't. I guess that's just because I'm more of a child that's just not like that and it was just better for me and I was able to understand it better, people like that. Because back here in the States, I'm not rich, I'm a middle, I'm, I'm grown up in a middle class family mm -hmm. and it just made it better for me. You know, you children are just the best. <laughs> I am so impressed with these children. Tell me a little bit, sister, and, and, and Sarah, if you don't mind, uh, how, you, how you were pleased that this was all connected with the Eucharist at Congress, because that's, that's important for us to understand, too. The bottom line for me is that I think we go to Eucharist, we receive the Lord, and then we go forth from there, and we're never just keeping the Lord to ourselves. We're sharing, we're trying to touch people's lives and share mm -hmm. the Lord who we receive, and I think that... Um, Anything that helps us to do that is really, really a, a gift. Uh, we are blessed in our society, and, and the Eucharistic Congress had so many different opportunities to inspire, to challenge, uh, to, to give uh, in many different ways. And I think that uh, this is just one example, and it was a wonderful example for the, for the youth in particular. And I hope it will continue, and I certainly intend to do everything I can to support and encourage. Sarah, how are you? How, what are your hopes and dreams with? I mean, this is marvelous with the children and and the work you're doing. Well, I think we we actually heard Charlie talk about connection. She was happy to connect with her peers as well. Uh, that's what these events do. But we would like to see the youth and anyone who is in one of these uh, volunteer events to feel like Charles said, feel connected to those that they're serving. Um, to, they may be far away, oceans away, but you were, the, the concrete nature of this kind of event and the spiritual experience it provides, uh, we want that to continue. We want people to continue doing these events. We will continue to keep the volunteers connected with the people in Burkina. We want them to go to the website and follow those shipments. And for more information the, on the project, yes. the folks can go to helpinghands.crs.org. Exactly. And right. keep us in your prayers, and we will yourself. And you know, the world is getting more, I think, more and more gift from God. So pray with each other and for each other, and thank you. And kids, you're the best. Yes. Well, thank Bless you. you very, very much. Thank you. And Sarah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.